With every major release, Inkscape just keeps getting better and better, and the new version 1.4 is definitely no exception. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the awesome new updates. Perhaps the biggest new feature in Inkscape 1.4 is the ability to use the Shape Builder tool on raster images. After importing an image into our document, we can draw some shapes on top of it, select the image and all the shapes, and activate the Shape Builder tool. If we click on the shapes, and press enter, it uses the shapes as clipping pads for the image. We also have a couple new options in the controls bar for the Shape Builder tool. First, if we click the I button, it brings up a slider that we can use to adjust the transparency of the objects on the canvas. Next, after choosing the parts we want to keep, and applying the result, it by default removes the original objects. However, if we toggle off this Replace Objects button up here, before applying the result, it will keep the original objects intact. The Spray tool also has a new feature. If we have some shapes selected, and we activate the Spray tool, it now gives us a preview of which item it will spray next, including its size and rotation. To spray the item, we can click the left mouse button. And to change to a different item, we can hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse just a bit. If you also work with Affinity Designer, you might like to know that we can now import Affinity Designer files into Inkscape and make some edits. Do be aware that this is a work in progress though, so it might not work perfectly with all files. Using the Rectangle tool, we've always been able to draw perfect squares by holding down the control key. However, the same key is also used for creating rectangles with particular width to height ratios. This can sometimes get annoying when we just want to draw squares. In version 1.4 though, we can now hold down Ctrl and Alt to force it to only draw squares. If we open up the Document Properties by going to File, Document Properties, then go to the Grids tab, we now have a new Modular Grid option. If we click the Modular button, it creates a grid of rectangles with gaps between them. We can adjust the size of the rectangles, the size of the gaps between them, and the margins. The margins are these lighter blue lines, which are nearly impossible to see. So we can use the color swatch here to change the color. Now we can turn on snapping and snap objects to different parts of the grid. If we go to the filters menu, we now have a Filter Gallery option. With this, we can see a preview of what a particular filter will look like if we apply it to an object. To apply a filter to a selected object, we can choose its icon in the gallery and click the Apply button down here. Likewise, we have an extension gallery, which we can find in the extensions menu, and which gives us previews of all the available extensions. To run a chosen extension, we can click the Run button at the bottom. If we apply a gradient to an object, 
In the gradient editor of the fill and stroke dialog, we now have a slider that we can use to rotate the gradients. Before this update, the only way to rotate a gradient was by using the gradient tool. If we apply the ruler path effect to a path, we can now change the angle of the ruler marks on the path. And we can also shift their positions on the path. A new feature that is currently in the experimental stage is something called the Unified Font Browser. The feature is disabled by default, and to access it, we have to open up the Preferences dialog, and if we search for the word Unified, we can now see in the Text and Font dialog section that we have two font selector options. List Fonts and Styles, which is the default, and Unified Font Browser. If we choose this option and restart Inkscape, the text and font dialog is now a bit different. We can now see a preview of all the available fonts in our system, and if we have a text object selected, we can automatically change its fonts by choosing one in the list. We can change the font size as well. Okay, so those were some of the biggest updates in Inkscape version 1.4. There are also quite a few smaller updates, and in the description box below, I'll leave a link to the release notes so that you can check out all the updates. Thanks for watching.